right, looks like we're back from our mandatory break. And uh, I think I was trying to figure out if there was a way I could make Whisper download the model. And it was interesting because I thought that... I was thinking that there, there was something that was happening on install. Also, this is still running, uh, which is interesting. Uh, I wonder if this is, if this is stuck or if this is just how long it takes to load a turbo size model. And we're gonna give it a little bit more time while I try to figure out uh, right, so what I was saying was I, I was thinking there was something where it would automatically download model stuff on install, but it doesn't seem like that's the case. Um, I know. Data. stuff in their releases. Someone wants to update the uh, readme. This is what this does. <laughs> some stuff maybe it talks about this and set up right these python 399 pytorch 1101 it's supposed to be yep yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. no. it also requires ffmpeg to be installed we'll see we'll see um models and languages .en models, which uh, tiny, base, small, and medium have, exist. Yeah, this is what that PR was updating, since the default apparently is turbo now, according to the running dash dash help. Um, and there is Python usage. could potentially make a little Python script that runs, I think, this line. I think that would trigger the download, right? So if I if I go over here, I do Python uh, import whisper. Yep. And then I want to do I don't even care about the model. I just want to see if loading a model will download it. Um, small, which shouldn't already be downloaded. There we go. That triggers the download. So if I just make like a two-line Python script, that can trigger the, the download. And then I can call that Python script from inside of the Docker file. And that'll um, be good. Oh, so here's where it put... <laughs> Uh, okay, and it doesn't take long to, to load the model. I suspect what's going on over in this other terminal is that uh, we're, we're passing nonsense into, in as the input, um, and it is not liking it, if that's the case. Yeah, so when I interrupted this, where were we at? We were attempting to transcribe. We're trying to, trying to do something with the audio. Um, that that is not gonna work uh okay so overall i think this is probably good i think what i want to do is just delete watch it delete the home directory now nah, it seems good 
seems like it did the right thing. Uh, and I'm gonna make a little helper uh, download model dot pi import whisper uh, if only there was a download model there is not though I don't think there is uh, we can check so there is a load model here Right in this. Here's that where it's gonna download. And then calls underscore download. Okay. So now there's the load. Hey look, we have autocomplete. Um so we're using turbo now, apparently. That's what I've decided on the spot. So we'll do that. Uh, and then in the Docker file, um, hmm. So when we call load model, I'm going to pass in some additional options here, I think. So, and then this is device. Buddha. I'm just going to cheat and kind of hard code things here model uh, and it's a bot if I bought right. uh, yeah it could you know read from an environment variable and those things and I'm, I might be inclined to do that at some point but for now um, I don't want to do this We have to do it like this. Okay, so we'll do run. Um, so when we're here, our app copy dot into app. But when we're here. We can't just run um, like it has to be something that exists in the image, right? So we have to first copy uh, what for builder. No, we don't. Yeah from Builder, right? Because Builder has a copy of everything. Uh, so we want to grab app audio transcriber uh, download model dot pi to there, sure, and then run it. Maybe that, maybe that even works. <laughs> um, yeah. So ideally, I would like to have a sample audio file, right? And then build a byte stream out of it and pass that in. And we could actually like unit test this, which would be Kind of interesting to write. I mean, probably what you should do maybe is like mock uh, the command line util or something. Whatever. I I'm satisfied with, with what we've tested so far. Um, show prompt language, all that gets passed through. Uh, I'm going to put a to do here. I want to eventually handle clip timestamps. Um, yeah, make this configurable this up to next to model. OK, 
can. So I think this might even work. Um, and we, I, I, I feel like we've kind of eliminated a lot of other issues and made some improvements here. Um, is this right? Let's uh, let's do one more test. audio transcriber error message getting object from s3 right so in here I tried to get uh, an object called a1 from bucket x1 presumably um, I guess if I wanted to see more I would want to have like debug equals is that debug or rusty bug trace Or Rust log. Like I can't remember. There we go. So many things. So we tried to do things that didn't work because I don't even have a you know I don't even have credentials set up here. So okay, but happy with that. Uh, and maybe even our 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 Docker file will be larger. But the, uh, the startup time will be fast, right? Because it'll have pre-downloaded the model. Uh, okay, so... Docker build audio transcriber. Yeah, I think that's the right command. We have some cache. Some things cached here, like in runtime. I cached all of those steps. It's gonna check dependencies and all that. So I think what I said before though was that one of our next steps is one of our next steps was going to be to look at step functions to be able to coordinate this logic, right? So we're gonna have a bunch of audio input files. We want to process them uh, serially, passing through context between them from a list based on what we're gonna read from Dynamo, DynamoDB. Um, and there's a bunch of things we can do. Like we can definitely uh, create the logic in here. Uh, we'll just start with blank. Uh, one of the things that I want to look at is if we look in the Pulumi docs, I think there are not a lot of options around defining step functions in Pulumi. Uh, let's see, step. Okay. Yeah, 
So AWS Cloud Control Provider. So this should be the uh, part of the AWS native, right? Yeah. What does this have to do with sub functions? It's just noting a gotcha. Great. Uh, so sub functions. State machine is the resource. In their example, you provide a definition string. So this is JSON, right? Defining the how the step function is supposed to work. Um, or you can specify where it is in S3. Be JSON or YAML. Oh, this one can be JSON or YAML too. There we go. Um, So speaking from experience with this sort of thing, one of the challenges with doing this is your step function definition is not simply, here's some, oh, well, they have definition substitutions. Okay. That's the mapping for placeholder values and state machine definition. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. mm -hmm. Variables can be simple parameter names, logical IDs, resource attributes. Okay, cool. Okay. This is good. So we can pass in Wait, what is the difference what is the difference between Amazon State's language definition of the state machine? Amazon State's language definition of the state machine. Format of the object must match the format of your CloudFormation template file. Uh huh. Okay, maybe let's look at another example. Do they have an example where? Okay, so here's where they're using definition string. Uh, both of these do, uh, but they're not using the parameterization thing. Well, this will be fun. Oh, here we go. So here they're referring to a JSON file in an S3 bucket and then providing definition substitutions. Right, so this is how you can be like, okay, in your JSON or YAML, you can refer to hello function and that's actually this ARN, which is good. Better than having to, you know, how else would you get like, in reality, what you would be doing is you would be defining your Lambda somewhere else in your Bloomy code, and then you would grab the ARN of that Lambda and pass it into definition substitutions. So hopefully that can be a thing that will work. If this becomes, if it doesn't, uh, my next resort is probably to switch from Bloomy, Bloomy back to something I'm much more familiar with, which is the Cloud Delta to get. I wanted to give this a good go, right? See, see how it goes. Uh, all right, so we failed. Uh, ah, attempting to serialize objects on a CUDA device, but torch.cuda is available as false. If you are running a CPU, please use torch load. Uh, okay. So, what does it do? The PyTorch device to put the model into. In memory, uh, whether to preload the model weights into host memory. Okay. Um, so maybe, maybe let's do, let's change this around. And we'll do this. Let's see how this goes. We look at 
the definition of this, this function here. What does uh, the value of device actually do? Right. I don't actually care, care about calling torch.load, I think. I only care that this line runs. Download, checkpoint file. Huh. This doesn't actually delete the file. This just deletes the reference to the file handle, right? Download here is what uh, I really care about. This is where we're actually downloading the model file and saving it out. I think though that you can imagine, you know, what we can do here is we can actually use the uh, designer to uh, kind of lay out what we want to do. Um, and what do we want to do, right? So the let me also pull up DynamoDB, right? So the idea is that this process is something that's going to be triggered uh, somehow after all the videos of the stream have been uploaded. Um, I'm not completely clear if like there's gonna be a button in the UI to kick this off. It'd be really nice if there was a way. Uh, oh, let's go back to the, the flowchart. Right, so we're here in this transcription and analysis, right? And so, I think the idea is going to be some kind of notification. Like, so after the stream is over, we're gonna be pushing data into AWS, and then there needs to be a notification that comes back to me that says, okay, everything has been fully ingested. Here's the data that, that it has. This is wait and user returns portion of this. Present metadata for review, user returns, and then there's a button that says, okay, proceed, right? So it's going to be something where stuff happens in the background and then uh, a notification is pushed to me. So that might be a browser notification, that might be an email, um, or both. That takes me back into the web app. Uh, it shows me a preview of like, here's all the video files from the stream. Here's the total length. Here's, um, you know, where we detect silence. Uh, silences, uh, it's weird to say we, right? The program that I'm writing is gonna tell me about the silences from the stream. Uh, and then uh, there'll be a button that, that is clicked and then that's gonna kick off this stuff, right? So the button will run the step function. So, um, and the input has to be something that, that identifies the stream. And I think the the key, literally, is the it, well is not the, the key here, right? Because the stream will be composed. Hey, uh, Mango Booty, uh, I think I've seen you around. Were you over on Marxy's stream? You had some cool mango emotes. Welcome in. I know I've seen you around somewhere. How's it going? I'm just doing some playing around with some stuff in AWS and doing some coding stuff. And I think right now waiting. Oh, it ran. You're everywhere. And you're, you're yeah. The thanks for the follow. Mango Booty 33 just followed. In the bits. Thanks for the five five bits. Five bits. <laughs> Mango Booty 33 just tiered five bits. All right. Um, so yeah, appreciate it. Look, you even got a uh, bits leader, number one bits leader. 
All right, so let's do more Docker things. Docker tag. So we're gonna tag that image and then Docker push. Yep. It's what you do. All right, well, that's awesome. Uh, oh, I, I am not logged in anymore. Docker, there should be commands in my history. There we go. Yeah, so we'll do ABS SCR, get login password, reloading Telegram admin, and then Docker login. Get new credential, and then rerun that previous command. There we go. So we're pushing up our uh, 1.6 gigabyte image. That's the, that's the model uh, for Whisper. Okay, cool. For some reason, Control W stopped working. Wait, 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 that's happened before. At some point in the past, Control W stopped working for me. And what was the cause? Oh, I know what it was. It's this program that I have installed. Um, I'll deal with it later. But yeah, it, I, I realized it's the, uh, the Samsung Magician thing for my SSDs. Um, I think there's an update and somehow their update process intercepts control W. I don't know why it would do that, but, uh, that is what happened before. And so that's what, that's what's happening now. I saw there was an update the other day. Uh, I didn't do it and I should have because now control W doesn't work. Uh, anyway, so the input to the step function that's going to orchestrate all of this, it needs, uh, to know what um, DynamoDB records is effectively what video files, right? Are part of the stream. Uh, and this table doesn't have that information. Like this table just has each individual one and the data from it, but this doesn't relate them together, right? To do that, uh, we don't have that information yet. We will have that information in the front end or in the, in the database which might eventually get migrated to DynamoDB, but you know, I haven't figured that part out yet. So let's assume that the input to the step function is going to be a list of keys. I think that'll make sense. It'll be a list of keys. And then what we need to do is we need to iterate over. Um, Iterate over them. So map is interesting. Some some new functionality there. I wonder if we can cheat and use map in a way that um, how many concurrency, uh, how many parallel iterations can we run? Uh, we could just do one. Does that effectively make it a loop? You could potentially do this this way. This is not really what this is intended for, right? Um, this is more for you have a bunch of things and you want to do processing in parallel on all the things. We don't actually want to do that. Uh, so let's take that out. Can I, can I just drag it out? Aw. Missed opportunity. Um... How do I? Oh, there. Okay. So, what do we do? Well, um, I think we what we can do is we can have a choice. We have patterns. Job polar. There should be more patterns here. But yeah, anyway. So, what we can do is we can do a choice. And. I can't rename the it's here. Yeah. So what if I say what I want to do is hmm, how do I want to do this? So in the state, 
in the kind of input to the step function, there's going to be a list of uh, strings, right? Each of the keys. And what I want to do is I want to say, maybe I, maybe I can do it this way. So if, um, let's say rule number one is that, let's see, add conditions. I haven't really used the, uh, the, this UI a lot, so it's gonna be interesting. Uh, so, say input keys, right? So this is a JSON path inside of the state of the step function, which initially will be whatever is input into the step function. Um, if it is, Map is a better way of going about this. Then. We aren't trying to do something in parallel. Uh, let's see. Info. Currently iterate over a collection of items and data set. Uh, I don't think the ordering uh, is respected. Map state sets inline is known as inline map state. Use map state in online mode. If your workflow's execution history won't exceed 25,000 entries, or if you don't require more than 40 concurrent iterations, um, which makes me really curious about distributed mode. Not that that is really relevant to what I'm doing here, but uh, it's really fascinating. Uh, for other use cases, uh, distributed mode, each iteration of the map state runs as a child workflow execution that enables high concurrency. Each child workflow execution has its own execution history. Yes. One of the limitations around execution history in step functions, so the like every step in the step function, which can be repeated multiple times, you can have loops, which is what I was going to do with the choice. Um, that adds up and, and goes towards the total event history, uh, which can't be more than 25,000 or you get an error. Uh, so it seems like this addresses some of those limitations, but again, not relevant for what I wanna do here. value of one invokes the item processor once for, each, once for each array element. Items in the array are processed in the order of their appearance in the input. That functions don't start new iteration until completely free. Okay, so you can use map and iterate over um, your items, right? So uh, let's call this process videos. and write a path to items array. So if you don't do this, it's gonna use the whole state input and that could be fine. Um, let's info here say, All right? So here's an example. By default, the map state uses the entire state input that it receives from a previous step. If your array is located in a specific JSON node, use this option to specify which node. Um, so I think like, if we're just starting the step function, the first thing we do is go into a map state, then the the current state input will be the input to the step function, which will be an object. So I'm pretty sure we have to provide this. And this is gonna be like uh, videos, video keys. There we go. Uh, modify items with item selector. Right. So by default, it just takes like if the video key is key in the object, 
is an array of strings, then this is fine. But if it was an array of objects that then had um, things inside of it, or we wanted to uh, otherwise map, right? Like if it was uh, an array of objects and they had like an image size key and they had other things, you do that. I think this will be fine. Uh, set concurrency limit, we're gonna set this to one. So we'll process one at a time. And then, yeah. Output. And for now, I don't, I don't even need to care about the output. Like we're not, if we had other steps where we're like, oh, this is going to, um, store some results and then we want to grab where I put it and then process it. Uh, we might care about doing any of these things. We can also add error handling. Uh, we might want to do that at some point. Be like, if this kind of error occurs, we try this way. If this kind of error occurs, go to this. That that can be things we can do. Um, and then the next thing I want to do here is for each video key, I want to run a task in uh, Batch. I'm going to submit a job for each video. Uh, and then want to grab our audio transcriber batch job definition and our GPU queue. And we're going to pass parameters. And we are going to wait for tasks to complete. And we'll have to figure out something to do with output. Actually, that'll be interesting. Can we? Hmm. Add original input. No, filter output, transform result with result selector. Actually, how's that going to? Oh, right, 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 right. So. Um, let's not worry too much about the details specifically, but one thing I know we're going to want to do, we're going to submit this job. We're going to wait for it to complete. And then we need the transcript. Um, well, we don't want the whole transcript. We, we need to do something else here. We need to do something where we're going to, um, Hmm, how's this gonna work? Let's imagine we invoke a Lambda. This Lambda is gonna be responsible for calling OpenAI's API to do a summarization of the transcript so far. Yeah. Right, so let's let's give some, uh, a little bit more context here, right? So this is gonna be trans, Subscribe audio to text. Yep. And this is going to be summarize uh, transcription. Right. Um, and then when that Lambda function is done, then what do we do? Well, we want to process the next video, right? But part of that is going to be getting the summary from this video. Uh, so we'll probably read that out of DynamoDB. So we will get item. Get uh, context from DynamoDB. And then I think what I want to attempt to do is feed this back into what map state is doing. Can I even do that? Map state accepts a JSON array as input and executes the same workflow steps for each element of the array. Uh, use input path filters to select a portion of the state to use. Suppose your state input is the following. So this is about, hmm, can 
we do this? Following key value pairs, replace the input base generation with the values of the image size variable and context object data for map state. The dollar dollar map item value context object contains the value of the individual data item. Yes. Ah. Output of a map state is JSON array. Yes. Huh. Okay, this might be why we can't use map, as appealing as it is, is that I don't think there's a way to change the overall state from inside of the map, right? So whatever state we can play here, we wouldn't be able to see. So the alternative to doing this is the, uh, is the thing that I was thinking before, where we would do a choice. Hmm. Hmm. So here's what we have so far represented as, as JSON. Um, yeah, so let's see. How can we do this? Let's add a pass state here. Transform input with parameters. No. More docs. All the docs. Uh, specifically, what I'm looking for is a way to look at. So we're gonna have a list. How do we iterate over the list, right? So um, the easiest thing to do is to start with an initial um, Task states can access placeholders for task states by outputting a mock task result. So what we want to do is we want to add this. I'm going to do like uh, something like iterator, yeah, uh, and we'll do index zero. Counts. And I think there should be a way. It's been a while since I've written one of these from scratch. There should be a way to get the length of a value in the state. Processing input and output. Input access using paths, context objects. It's not what I want. What's it even called? Ba -ba. Let's look at Amazon State Watch. Oh, intrinsic functions. Intrinsics, yes. So you can make an array, you can partition an array. You can check to see if an array contains something. You can get an item from an array. Uh, array length. Right, so can we do, so what did that syntax look like? Yeah. Uh, what did I call it? Video keys. Can we do that in this? Hmm. 
filter input with input path select portion transform input with parameters maybe this is actually what i want to do instead of doing that over there right so then yes this looks familiar okay so let me undo this or put this back uh let's do count dot dot dollar colon something like this but this needs to be hmm actually could i could i do this is this valid what if i click test state testing a state requires an execution role uh select an existing one not have an existing one uh, okay, we'll go create one. Uh, state input is going to be something like video keys. This doesn't actually have to be valid. Just, you know, it needs to look uh, like the right type. Uh, let's see. Use any role in your AWS account. We'll see some part specific IAM policies, but they'll call. Uh, we can use any I am role. Okay, sure. How about a role? Uh, eh, I mean, if any role will do. Yoink. Ensure one. Okay, I see. Start test. Okay, so that didn't work. Uh, yeah. Trinsic functions. Yeah, so I think maybe I need to do this over here. Um, which case I also have to grab video keys to carry it through right on well they say they didn't close this tab Oh, and that put it inside of iterator, which we don't need to do anymore, but you can see the count there too, right? Index zero count too. Uh, so uh, I can change this to not add original. All right, so if I do this now, this should effectively, I can't hit remember. There, so it effectively replaces the input state. Hey Dan, how's it going? doing all right on this uh, Sunday morning. Uh, how am I thinking about how fast the uh, the weekend has gone by uh, thus far? I even had Friday off, but ended up doing a lot of uh, errands and running around uh, Friday and Saturday both, but uh, this taking it a little bit easy this morning. I made some uh, French toast, uh, re realizing after the fact it's been a while and I probably should have looked at a recipe or something, but uh, it wasn't too bad. Uh, and uh, currently trying to recall how all this uh, step function stuff works. Uh, so I think this gets us to the point where we can iterate the other way, where, where we do a choice, right? So. Uh, let's see, how do I, okay, left click and drag to move it around. So, we have a choice here. This is going to be our um, loop over videos, right? And then we're going to edit these things. So if, uh, what is it actually called? Hold on one second. Go back here. Uh, count. 
if if index is less than count is the condition I want to care about here. Right? So if dollar dot index is less than um, this is a number variable dollar dot count. Okay. So if index, oh, this is, uh, let's see. We're gonna do some stuff over here, but yeah, this step is gonna live over here and default is gonna be kind of our ending path, right? So, uh, that over there. Um, and then, how's this supposed to work? I know I can make this go back to the beginning. How do I do that? How does one is this editable? Okay, okay. Uh, let, let's focus on like what I want this to do. And come back. So um, I'm gonna add a pass here, and what this is? Oh, right, we can just change next day. Okay. Uh, so this is going to be something where we. Um, I guess that's not necessary. Let's let's actually let's let's delete that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move submit job over to the side, and then summarize over here, and then get context. Yeah, and then I'm gonna remove the the map state. What we're gonna do is that this get item when it's done, its next state is actually going to be to Go back to loop over videos. Almost. We need one more thing. We need one more thing. Um, yeah. So we're gonna add a pass. And I'm gonna go back to intrinsic function. Is there math operations? Math add is a thing that exists now. That's great. It's gonna make things much easier. So increment uh, index, and then go to uh, loop over videos. The choice, right? And so what this looks like is we use transform input with parameters. Um. I want to do this. Hmm, I, I know what I want to do. I want to change this past state. First of all, this should be like set up loop. Uh, set up state. Yeah. And then I want to embed index inside of Let's, do the, let's call this uh, iterator. I want to put an object here. Not, a, not an iterator. I don't know what that is, but an iterator uh, in the index. This is going to make some things easier down the road, right? So we have an iterator there. And then what I want to do in this choice is I'm going to update this now. So this is iter dot index is less than count. And then here, um, what I want to do is I want to make a new index dot 
dollar. Uh, Native Hunter. Thank you for the raid. And in Vague Hunter 90 just raided with three viewers. Welcome, raiders. Uh, you're streaming Paladins. It's a game I don't know, honestly, a lot about. Let's see, did Frosty Tools give you a good uh, summary? I think so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it can't, unfortunately, do my emotes, but, you know. The, the, the context is there. I think that's accurate. How are you doing? Welcome in. It's a bit of a, a switch from gaming over to uh, what well, looks like looking at diagrams. <laughs> but we're, we're coding something uh, that is going to be processing, doing video processing for me as soon as I figure out how to do it. Uh, i just chilling now. Daughter woke up, so I'm taking a break from gaming. All right. Makes sense. All right, so we're going to do something like this. We're gonna do, we're gonna make index B, um, math add one. We're gonna do iterator.index. Uh, how have I been? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. <sighs> Thinking about, uh, well, trying not to think about work tomorrow. <laughs> But uh, also thinking about, oh, it's on a different desktop. I have like 40 days until my vacation. I and mean, weather is getting, getting colder there? Yeah, I imagine. Uh, it's getting colder too, uh, here too. Um, but probably not as much as there. Okay, so we're gonna add one to iterator index and we're gonna create this object that's gonna have index. And the idea is that this transformation is going to mirror what's inside of $.iterator. And what, what I'll be able to do is that I can have the output. Uh, Satan's task. Okay, so what we can do is we can combine the original input with the result. And we put that inside of iterator, right? So that's why I wanted iterator to be an object that contains index. So we can make a new iterator object here and stick it back into this place. So when we get back here, we can look at iterator index and it will be one more. And so this is just a for loop <laughs> with uh, a lot of extra steps. Uh, and then what I want to do here is I need to prepare some parameters. So we have a parameters uh, JSON. And what I can do is if I look at the batch job, you know, I have things like item key and input key and language. And what I can do is I can provide those. hard-coded than others and I have to think about how I want this to work exactly uh, so the item key well, this will be interesting so we're gonna need another we're gonna need another thing here um, but but item key should be uh, that's the emote. <laughs> that's uh, a cute taco. Item key dot dollar. Dollar dot. Uh, what did I call it? Video keys. Except we need to get the specific item located at iterator index. And I think there was an intrinsic function for that. Array get item. Yeah, array get item. 
then I guess it's video keys and then the index. So this would be dollar dot iterator dot index. And missing a comma on the end, maybe. So that'll be item key. We need to figure out what input key is and there's not, I mean, we could probably guess what it is because of the way things are set up. The audio key is just like the input key with audio stuck on the front, but I don't want to assume that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fetch that information right somewhere in here. There we go. Uh, change this around. Get item from DynamoDB. And then what we'll do is we'll have to parameterize and provide the table name and how we're looking things up. But this is, I think, the overall structure um, that's going to happen. So we're going to be able to, from here, get the context that's stored in DynamoDB from our Lambda function that's going to do the summarization from the, the, the transcript. And then we'll be able to use that in the next video as context for the next transcription job. And so this structure is going to be how we're going to do this work uh, using the new Docker image that's now pushed up. So I think after the break, uh, which is starting any second now, we'll be playing around with this Docker image and testing things out. So I'll be right back in just a few minutes. <laughs> 